Hey everybody and welcome to week 9. I'm sorry that I wasn't able to do the conference like normal today, um, but I'm going to do this little video and then if you have any questions on anything, please do not hesitate to reach out. I'd be happy to talk via email or set up another live conference during the week. So we have two discussion boards this week. As always, make sure uh, you post on the first one by Wednesday to get um, attendance and points in the discussion board. Production designers are responsible for determining the overall look of a project and making the entire team understand the look of the production. This role is integral to the success of the film. Research a, research a production designer for a favorite film, can be animated or live action, explain why you chose them, what films they have done, what are common elements through their work, and how you can use them as an influence in your final project. Um, this is just a really interesting um, aspect. I think that um, a lot of us can kind of get caught up, you know, if my major is animation, whatever, let's just say. Some people feel like they can only look for jobs that are titled animator. And that's not necessarily the case. You can look for jobs that way, but there are a lot of other job roles and obviously, um, I don't think we think right away of a production designer. And this is a really interesting role, and it's a big role, and as you'll see, it's higher up. Um, so take a look at what they do, how they make a difference, all of that. So uh, discussion board number two, project four, phase two, work in progress. Post a PDF here of your work in progress. Comment on as many of your classmates' posts as you're able to. Think about concept excuse me, think about concept, composition, and presentation. Okay, and then the actual project for phase two. You wrote a short story last week, and now we're going to be storyboarding and uh, thinking about lighting, camera angles, staging, highlighting both action and dialogue. Okay, so submitting our completed storyboard. So I wanted to discuss um, just a couple of camera moves that I think could be really beneficial, might not be used as much, um, but I want you to be aware of. So I, I may have talked about this before, but I want to reiterate it. So we have a match on action shot. Match on action is the illusion, illusion that the action continues uninterrupted even though the camera positions have changed from one shot to another. To do a match cut, everything at the end of the first shot much closely match the action at the beginning of the next shot. So most of the time you're gonna to wanna to do like a cut to a close up or a cut if you were in a close up to a further backed out shot. So a lot of times this is used, um, and a good example that I like to think of is when a, a person is taking off their glasses in shock, right? <gasps> and they pull them off their face. So we may see kind of a zoomed out of the person, their arm is extended out and they are pulling the glasses off, okay? Then you would zoom in to see the close up of the hand and glasses pulling it off further. So you need, when you're matching the action, you need to make sure that our, the audience first saw the action. So if I just have the hand coming to the sunglasses and then I cut to a closer up view, we're not gonna get that as much. Um, you wanna make sure that the audience can still absorb the details, okay? So sometimes we um, repeat the action almost in that close up shot or in that further, the second uh, version of it. So you have the glasses pulling off, then you may have a close-up of the glasses, maybe not from the start, but from halfway on. Okay, so that's a match on action. We have an eye line match. Okay, so we match what the character is looking at. If a person is going to look off screen, you know, and let's say they look to the right, us as viewers are going to look to the right, even though, you know, our screen might end there. Um, but if they're going to do that, we expect the next uh, scene to be shown will be what the character sees. So if I'm looking at you guys and I'm, oh, I'm shocked and I look to the right, we expect as an audience to see you know, that huge spider or that revealing moment in the next shot. Okay? Um, a 
cutaway is something, um, and I guess I could use, I've got a lot of things open here. Um, so we had match on action. would help if I was not in that while I'm trying to use hotkeys. There we go. Now we can see what's happening. Uh, so your match on action. We have your eyeline match. And it would help if I was using black. the eyeline match. All right, so now we were talking about cutaways. So a cutaway is used to manipulate time and space. The cutaway should be related to the main action but not a part of it. For example, two boxers exchanging blows in the ring, you might cut to, jarring fa to cheering fans or perhaps a refreshments vendor. It's kind of like um, using B-roll or different action just to, to show time is passing, to show what's happening. So we see the boxers getting ready to fight, we see them fighting, and then like look at a close-up of a fan. Maybe we watch their face change, whether their favorite um, competitor is winning or losing. Um, a like let's say a character is rubbing a convenience store. You could cut away to reactions of patrons and then come back to it. We also have cut-ins. So uh, cut-ins focus on the primary action of the scene. Rather than cutting away from the action, the cut-in shot narrows our view to a smaller portion of the main action, which makes more of a dramatic emphasis. So. Um, if we're looking at a baseball game, then we could cut into the bat actually connecting with the baseball about to hit that, you know, home run. Okay, and then lastly, we have cross cutting. So cross cutting um, can also be called parallel editing, but it manipulates both time and space. Action that's happening at the same time is an intercut, so the audience might be able to see a parallel action. Um, it can provide suspense, add to the drama. Um, so think about, for example, like a bad guy gonna get his next uh, victim as the hero is racing in. So we have two independent scenes, but they're edited together to add to it. So um, you know, maybe the victim is tying, or the victim, the kidnapper is tying up the victim to a chair. And then we cut to the police officer in the car saying the details that he found the location. And then we go back and forth. It also kind of gives um, more drama because you're not sure the timing. You know, I don't know how many of you have seen, but where, you know, the person is in grave danger and it's about to happen. Just as we see the police officer open the door that they know the victim is in, but it's the wrong location, it's too late, or it's too early. So you can play around with some of that as well. Okay, so these are not transitions between panels, but these are some different transitions that you can do to tell your story. Okay, so some transitions between panels that I want to talk about. Um, I have After Effects open here. Obviously, we're going to be doing animatics later, so I'm not going to go over the tools to do it, but I'm just going to show you the different types of transitions. So the first one we have is a base cut, and I just have two images here from um, a storyboarding book, but the cut, we're in one frame, boom, it's the next. Nothing happens between them, it's just from one to another. Um, cuts um, are, you know, the most frequently used transition, um, most audiences don't even notice when a program cuts to different angles. Um, you know, we blink a lot. So sometimes just blinking and having a new one is there. 
you're drawn into the story, hopefully, so you don't really notice the cut as much. Okay, um, let me backtrack a little bit. So transitions is what I'm talking about now, camera transitions, panel transitions, um, and it links two shots together. Okay, they contribute to the pacing of the production, um, whether it's lyrical or abrupt, um, and there are several different types of transitions. So I started with the cut. There's also a dissolve. So a dissolve um, is when the two panels are, you know, um, scenes, um, shots are superimposed onto each other. Dissolves can be any length of time, any length of time, um, and we can do this depending upon the mood or idea that you're trying to get. So when you have a dissolve, we're going to be able to actually kind of grain away from one into the other. Now we have a cross dissolve, we have just a dissolve out. Okay, I'm going to show you in terms of a fade and then we'll get into a dissolve, kind of that graininess out in a second. So fades are used to denote a passage of time. Um, you can fade to black that's the most common, um, and that you don't necessarily need a second image. You could end your, your story, whatever it is there. So if I'm gonna fade to black, I'm gonna actually fade out the opacity on my panel. So I have this at 100%. Let's say I'm going to just fade to black. Okay, um, let me set up my composition setting to be a black background. And again, I'll go over tools later. This is just for you to understand. So fade to black, we have the panel, it fades out to black. Okay. We also have a fade to white. Now, fade to black and fade to white can kind of mean different things. You get a different feel for it. And I'll tell you more about that in a second. But if I just change this to white, now we have a fade to white. Okay. Now you can also just fade into your other panel. Um, and now if we were going to do kind of this cross dissolve or cross fade, what I would do is make sure these were perfectly aligned and I would take my second panel and do the opposite. So it's going to be at 0% transparency here and then it's going to go to 100. So as this top scene is fading out, my second scene is second scene is fading in. Okay. Now, um, fade in is the opposite of a fade out. So how I had this fade out to white, you can have it fade into white. So let's in this one. 100%. Instead, it would just be at the beginning, starting at zero, however many seconds that you wanted it to fade in. Bring that to 100. Okay, so fade in, fade outs. Fade ins ease the audience into a setting. Um, generally, you're going to fade in from black, but you could fade in from white as well. All right. And then I'm going to delete these real quick here. We have a wipe. Um, so wipes um, function the same way as a cut, transitioning from one shot to the next, but it pushes one of the images off screen and shows our second image. So this is a lot of times um, used in like Star Wars or like The Mandalorian, that whole universe. That's a pretty common
Okay, let me bring this up nicely here. So we'd have something like this, where it just kind of pushes off screen, and then we see the second one there. Okay, again, transitions can be used in a lot of different ways. Here are just some still um, versions so that you can kind of see. Fade in, fade out, wash out, uh, you know, fade to white. Dissolve, it's gradual moving from one image to another. Cross dissolve is the effect where one image is subtly replaced by overlapping on another image. You can see where we can kind of see both images through in the middle. Ripple dissolve, cut. Um, we have jump cuts, cut away that we talked about earlier. Wipe. So, um, yeah, these are just some things I want you to be thinking about um, because you have been thinking about camera angles, camera positioning, and now it's how do we transition from one camera to the next. Most of the time, cuts are going to be the way to go but I do want you to know the additional ways. And also if you wanted to add some style um, or you know, if you had a certain mood that you wanna portray, some of these work better than just a cut. So slide, sliding in, we looked at that. Iris is another kind of interesting one that can be used, isn't very commonly used, but we have kind of that vignette starting with a circle coming all the way out to see the scene or vice versa. Um, there's also a morph where you can see the character just kind of transition into a new version of the subject. Um, this is the iris in again, where you can kind of transition from scene to scene. Again, you can see like it's very stylized. This is, you know, I think of like Wes Anderson or kind of those comedies where they would add a sound effect with like whoop, to see the iris in or out. Um, so fades, um, very subtle. It's key to use though. Fade in, we showed earlier, I showed earlier, but fade out. Okay, fading to white. Dissolve, that cross dissolve. You can kind of see the graininess as we go. Ripple dissolve, adding more of that, you know, ripple dissolve a lot of times is the um, dream sequence or coming back from the dream. Cuts, jump cut, cut away. Okay, so let me bring this back. So a lot of times with storyboards, because these are um, redone, you know, you need to make changes on a storyboard. There may be director's notes or maybe, you know, like for this class, it's just you, but you are gonna wanna make some changes. So a lot of times we don't get too deep into shading. Now, that being said, you 100% want to think about your lighting and what it's doing in your scene. Um, but with this image, what I want to talk about is a lot of times we only use about four tones or four shades of black to um, add that lighting to our storyboard. Okay, you generally want to start with your kind of basic outline that a lot of um, you have been doing so far in the term. And then we would add these four different levels of shading. Now you can see how these are kind of sketchy, but they're gonna add a big difference. So again, here's our kind of base storyboard panel. And then we think about tonal contrast in terms of just adding some depth to the scene. But I want you guys to think about it in terms of lighting as well. Now I know I talked about lighting in an earlier week, but you wanna be thinking about it in each of your panels. So this panda, uh, this panda, this koala, uh, looks kind of angry in what he's doing. So you could think about adding a light, like a lamp in this scene, and getting maybe that two-toned light and then shadow 
um, that would kind of give that menacing feel, right? Or maybe this is more of a sad frame. And maybe there's just the light coming off of the computer and everything is kind of shaded. You probably would not want to use this dark, dark shaded tone. You'd kind of want to keep it this middle gray so that we can still tell what's going on. But maybe you use the light from the computer to light the koala's face. And then everything else maybe kind of vignettes out to be darker and darker. That way, as, uh, as an audience viewer, we are drawn to his face and maybe, you know, depending upon what dialogue you have or what you're trying to say, we're going to focus in because of the lighting, right? Remember, we're always thinking about our principles of design and our composition in each frame, which can be challenging. You know, maybe you have a lot of storyboard panels, but you need to look at each one as a composition and think about what's working well to tell your story and how it's going to affect the panel before and the panel after. Now, let's say you're just doing two cuts, right? The panel before, cut, this panel, cut to the next one. Depending on that lighting, we might be drawn to this koala here. So know that when we go to our next panel, our eyes are gonna be around here, so you wanna keep it around there. Okay. I know I've talked about that in previous lectures, but it's dealing with your continuity. It's dealing with how easily the viewer can see something. If we're looking here and then you immediately want us to look down here and it cuts back and forth, we could get very confused as a viewer and not know where we should be looking or we could miss a very important action and you don't want that to be the case. Um, so when you're dealing with these kind of storyboard panels in their earlier phases of development, you want to think about your light, your light source, and the value that the light and shadow are creating. You want to think about silhouettes. So think about, you know, maybe you don't have these as a silhouette, but like we can look at this jacket here as more of a silhouette. Think about the shapes, the positive and negative space around it. Think about the texture. You know, do we want this, I think I keep calling it a panda, the koala, to be fuzzy and furry in contrast to a smooth desk? That would make the character pop as well. Um, and sometimes we use color. This far in the term, I don't need you to use color in your storyboard panels. That will be something that we will get to, okay? When you're thinking about your panels, um, they should read from a distance of like, you know, um, think about how far you sit from your computer, okay? And now we're dealing with panels that are further zoomed out. Obviously, I have the benefit, since this is kind of an online course, I can zoom in and look at each of your panels that way, but they still should be able to read. If I'm looking at your six to 10 panel page, I should be able to look at the page as a whole and still be able to tell what's happening, okay? So your details, while they can be specific and kind of hidden in your panel, you wanna make sure that they're visible in a sense that if we are zoomed out, we won't miss any of your main actions. Okay, so I want you to really think about this as we're moving along, okay? Think about adding a little bit more detail in your panels than you've added in the past, but in terms of shading. So again, not getting crazy, I'm not adding color or anything too much, but now taking this sketch kind of panel and starting to add more details um, with light which just means highlight, shadow, thinking about your light source in each one. So let's think of all of that while we finish up this project of your own idea. Again, be um, very descriptive on oh, no, this one. Um, think about your lighting, camera angles, staging, and highlighting the action and your dialogue, okay? So really take your storyboards and push them to the next level. 
we're more than halfway through the term, so I want to see you progressing with your skills in storyboarding. All right, so don't hesitate with any questions, and I will talk to you soon.